everyone. Um, so the lighting is slightly different today and the reason being is that it's a super sunny day outside with loads of fast moving clouds and I actually just almost finished doing a flip through for this uh, sketchbook and it was impossible because I had like sun and window and it just, it was, believe me, it's better than the other version. So I decided to refilm the whole thing. Okay. Right, so this is a flip through for my Jackson's hardcover sketchbook. So at the end here it says 35% cotton, it's 160 GSM um, paper, 96 pages and the size is 17 by 11.5 centimeters. I'll try to link it down below. I believe the same sketchbook comes in a different format if you prefer larger. This sketchbook I bought not as my main sketchbook but as something to experiment with. For example, if I buy a new art supply and I want to try it out without working on my uh, main sketchbook pages. So this is what it is. It's a little sidekick which I absolutely enjoyed. So let's jump into it. First page. This is actually... Um, I've done this page after finishing the sketchbook. Um, because I just find when you start a new sketchbook, even if it's not a your main sketchbook, but just as like a experimental add-on, I find that the first page is always just too much pressure. And what I now tend to do is I leave the first page blank. I start on the uh, um, the double spread so that that at least has some sort of coherence there and that's what I did so this is now actually with this lighting I can show it to you perfectly which is fantastic so this is um, as you can see 8th of April 2021 this is when I finished my sketchbook on the first <laughs> page of it I know it makes sense um, yeah so here we go look at this area here this is like my favorite little mixes and that is from my new palette I can't tell you much about it all I can say is that it has these four colors not this one this one will be um, a separately sold one because I know not everyone likes you know heavy full-on shimmer kind of um, colors and so it will be available to buy but like as a, a separate half pan um, if if you are interested, so these mixes are achieved by mixing the red and the turquoise. Now all the names of the colors and the packaging and everything I will show you. It's still happening. It's still in the midst of working and finishing. But for now, I just wanted to show you that these two colors can be super intense, incredibly pigmented. All of them are super pigmented. But if you water them out, they create the most gorgeous mix and I just absolutely love it you have to try it um, to understand and also it's actually quite easy to remix okay swiftly moving on um, so this sketchbook I found to be quite great for all sorts of mediums and I'd say it um, it would be a great mixed media sketchbook or like you know experimental swatch book or something but one thing that didn't work from what I tried is Dr. PH Martin's Radiant Colors. They have they're not light fast, and maybe that's why they're not archival, and therefore probably that's why the yellowing is happening. So some of their colors, like this one, which is scarlet, um, seems to have so in all cases here the scarlet basically when the pages were closed, this swatch went onto here. There's a yellow outline from this color. This scarlet went on to here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll bring it up closer. And this scarlet went all across there. So this sort of yellowing really puts me off. I don't like that. I like to know how my, you know, art supplies react. And certainly not give me... So this was just like, what, 10 months? Um, I finished the sketchbook. I started it when I uh, started working on my first online course, which must have been around May. I think May, June last year, so now we are in April, so yeah, about 10 months. And I noticed this yellowing a good, like, 
like at a good midpoint, I think. Um, yeah, so a few months and you get basically that. Not not keen on that. Okay, next thing. Oh, if you're interested, what um, online course this is? This is from the Playful Watercolors, where I explored um, a different art supplies that can work as watercolors and then also introducing other mixed media into it which you'll see a few pages um, further on here as well. Here I am just playing with a neo color too. So actually here I just had this page which is experimenting with my stencil. So I've got four stencils in my Etsy shop Alona Creates. I've got iris, tulip, water lily and chrysanthemum. This is what they look like when you use them as stencils. And they're all floral ornaments. And basically what you can do is you can, they were inspired on Moroccan tiles. So you can, you know, easily create tile um, background with it. But you can also just use parts of the stencil. In this case, it was... Which one was it? This one, wasn't it? Yeah, the water lily. Um, so I've done just the center of it and then layering the pattern. So you can create a nice little pattern and it can be um, repeated and sort of endless. So you can create a whole page of it if you wanted to. I find this sort of thing is very, very relaxing. All you need is a little um, like a makeup wedge spongy thing. That's what works best for me anyway. You could also try the um, Tim Holtz, um, you know, the sponge tools and some nice um, inks. So what I like to use is either Tim Holtz oxide inks or I'll show you these. All oh, these little babies, uh, they are fantastic because the color range is amazing. So you get anything from pearls to metallics. Um, they're like heavy duty metallics, they really are, and then some gorgeous um, chalky colors. So all of these are chalk, um, they're called Versa Magic Chalk Inks, and they're by Dewdrops. They're really tiny, very cute, they don't take up that, that much space, and you know, <laughs> the world is your oyster basically. So yeah, once I've done this color palette, I then went ahead and kind of wanted to explore this color palette further in my other uh, supplies. So I sometimes keep a page empty if I'm not sure what I want to do and that's another good way of kind of reflecting your own artwork. Here I've done a spread using Daniel Smith watercolor ground and you can see now in this lighting perfectly this is all the texture that dried from the watercolor ground. This is what I like to use it for. Did I say it was in buff titanium? I don't remember now because I'm filming it second time, but I like to use a spatula. Since organizing, I have moved it, but basically uh, something like that, more kind of fancier version of this, like, you know, you can get them in metal, but I, I use the plastic as well, and just kind of apply it in an artistic, um, free-handed way to create this background texture. Once you've done that, wait for it to dry fully, best, I would say if you do it in the morning, probably you can go over acrylics in the evening, but I like to do it in the evening and then next morning I can go into it. And basically, and then over it you can create a lovely um, acrylic kind of um, work and you'll have the texture come through. So I really enjoy that. So that's basically acrylic over watercolor ground rather than watercolor over watercolor ground, if that makes sense. Here, same thing. This time, what am I playing with this time? Iris, I think. Is it Iris? Where is Iris? Yep. So I have, no, hold on. That must be tulip, actually. Yeah. So I have taken just this part of the tulip and done a repeated kind of pattern like that. So you can see, you can isolate the stencil into patterns that you like and create um, beautiful pattern so this goes that way you could rotate it you can do so many different things with just one um, stencil because there's so many beautiful ornamental designs I mean I'm so proud of like have created such an intricate design and the fact that my manufacturer was able to create such a beautiful quality product okay 
same thing I left the page empty and then later maybe a couple of weeks later um, go in with other supplies that mimic the color palette see what I have kind of rummage through my art supplies and just play around same thing here so this time let's see this is iris yeah so this one is the iris so what I've done here is I tilted the design um, like that way so upwards and then I tilted it this way and went downwards and kind of just overlapped them a little bit and then the center part I just placed in the empty areas and there you go okay so then we have this color palette and a bit more abstract I thought this time I'll go into just like rather than just doing this I'll spend a bit more time and not going to write down but I do remember this is the barrel green which is this pencil here Museum of Corral by Karen Dash it's a watercolor pencil best watercolor pencils that are out there in my opinion that video is still coming uh, where I'm comparing the watercolor pencils and explain why I love them so much. Okay, here is more from the first online course, um, Playful Watercolor. Again, exploring some mark making. And this is from something else, I don't remember now what it is. Just some boring couple of pages. I am proud to say that I only have four boring pages in the entire sketchbook which um, who cares about so let's go back to the uh, mark making so this is again from on uh, from the first online course exploring different mediums and just playing around using other art supplies in place of watercolor or in combination with watercolor and it's a really fun way of getting yourself familiar with art supplies and what could be a fun way of using um, other things with watercolor and just just it up a little bit okay so here again some other brush uh, brush marks and mark making from the first online course here is the time or around the time when I discovered so this is September 2020 when I discovered the Ecoline what are they called liquid watercolors and I love them they're super fun the year 2020, although horrible in many other ways, um, it has, however, been a year of discovery when it comes to a couple of amazing art supplies for me. And I also discovered Sennelier and Shiva oil sticks. Now, they are a stunning product. So here are some swatches. What they are is basically oil paint in a, in a shape of a stick. So I've got quite a few. This is just what fits into a... Um, jam jar and this is what they look like so they film or they they create a film over the paint you just need to take a tissue swipe it off so you can see this is what they come like you just take this one off and then eventually it hardens so every time you want to use them just uh, you know use a tissue to take it off and then it's a very clean way you don't get your hands dirty just do your thing and then what I found works quite well. I was told off to use my fingers, but it's like mixed um, mixed opinion on these. Um, but yeah, the thing that works well is those makeup sponges or wedges. They work well on this as well. And basically you can see it has some of the colors as a totally kind of this oil. You can see it's dry, but it looks like wet, but it's the texture of an oil paint which is absolutely amazing not every color has that um, this particular one has a lot of it it's a green dark green one I don't remember if it's a sub green or something else olive green maybe and then some dry matte so it really is dependent on colors some of them have more transparency some of them are more opaque uh, this is a Mars yellow which is stunning highly recommendable yeah great okay um what else do we have some more play on um liquid ecoline liquid watercolors that's it um here i have bought that glacier schminke uh set the the one with the beautiful blue colors and some green eco lines that I decided to add. Now this is from the second online course, the Contemporary Color Palette, where I explored how to put 
all of your different uh, supplies into different color palettes and then play around so that was really fun this is just again here are some oil past um, oil sticks from Sennelier that I have mixed so this is alizarin violet lake and antique white they mix beautifully and um, this is diamine cocoa shimmer and inferno orange here is cocoa shimmer on its own and it is amazing it's just one product it's basically an ink for your fountain pen both of them are doesn't clog it if it's a good quality pan it won't clog it if it's um not so good one i found it didn't work with let me see with this one the uh Coveco sport so with that one it doesn't work um but yeah other than that my lamis are absolutely fine with it so it's gorgeous and you just need that ink and a brush and water so the more you water it out, the more you get that watercolor effect, the less you add water, or if you don't add any water, but just kind of use it like that, straight from the bottle with your brush, that's where you get the gold visible. So it just looks amazing. Um, here is more of the Ecoline water, liquid watercolors. Here is um, also from the second online course, exploring color palettes and different watercolors in the same colors um, it's been really fun putting that course together I'm so amazed how many of you have um, purchased that course thank you so so much um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed it and learned loads and loads um, this is one of the botanicals that I have created in that class I'm trying to think where they uh, there are a few botanicals that I did in the like finished work in the in the course and then we did like one abstract I think as well then I am uh, looking at my Rembrandt watercolors so this is a little discovery I did when um, when I reorganized my studio did a bit of a spring clean and then it was just lovely to um, to find things that I haven't used in a while and here I am exploring Rembrandt Dusk Pink in a color wheel and mixing it with other colors creates magic. Absolutely love it. And then we have some abstracty type of swatching, mark making and color palette exploration. Some more of that. Pink mixes, this is Ecoline, uh, a mix that I think I put a video together, I'll try to link it up if I won't forget um, how to create my favorite pink and then some more kind of, I think these are mostly Daniel Smith colors and again some abstract color palette making trying to introduce my blues which seems to be a bit challenging for me although I like uh, this type of a blue I don't use blue very often the blues that I do like are sort of the turquoise blues uh, but yeah so trying to look at different blues in my art supplies and introduce them into different color palettes here are the Aquarius uh, watercolors which again this was from um, rediscovering them I forgot about them to be honest um, then one thing I want to say though they have a few turquoises and the cobalt sea blue seems to be a great um, kind of affordable it's more affordable than other um, artist grade quality um, watercolors and uh, they mix really beautifully with neutrals so if you wanted cobbles cobalt blues or cobalt teals or cobalt turquoises they are always expensive I know that because personally here we go I worked with it they're not easy to work with they're one of the most like dry pigments I ever worked with no matter what I try doing with it <laughs> um, with the formula it still would sort of crack at the end I wanted it to look perfect and smooth when drying it's just the nature of it however 
the the pigment itself there's nothing wrong with it you know once you revet it you're good to go it's super pigmented super high quality beautiful pigments and so um, I found this for an affordable affordable version if you didn't want to if you find yourself going through cobalts like uh, blues and turquoises and teals going through them fast try this it does still work not probably as well as some of the high quality cobalts would but that's what you pay for or what you pay for is what you get but it does work still nicely I'll say that okay so then we have turquoises uh, different I should say different um, colored pencils and some watercolor pencils as well as neo color um, crayons one and two in that sort of color theme um, I am thinking we will have to Yes, we will have to break up here and do a part two because I don't want this video to be extremely long. So take a little break, maybe make yourself a cup of tea. In fact, I feel super dry from talking so much. Um, I'm going to go get a bottle of water and I will see you in part two.